Mm-hmm. This is Nora Jihan, Al Hot, Clarksville, Tennessee. Hi, everyone. My name is Meredith, and uh, welcome to 2024. I'd like to welcome you to the Keep It Pro training call brought to you by Networking Wisdom each and every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific for the past eight years. This call is brought to you free of charge every week with the intention to teach you skills and strategies that will guide you to success, whether in your business or in your personal life. The host of this call is Mr. Ramacio Fulcher. Ramacio is an internationally recognized mentor, trainer, and entrepreneur. Although Ramacio had extreme success in network marketing, doing over $2 billion in sales with a distribution team of over 750,000 people worldwide, three years ago, he decided to shift gears into the world of international commodities, trade, and finance. Having jumped into this unknown territory, Ramacio turned to God for guidance more than ever, dedicating many hours to reading and listening to the Word of God. Over the last several years, he has gone through many ups and downs as he had to navigate and learn a new trade. As he kept his faith and belief strong, miracles began to take place, helping him through his trials and tribulations. The world, the Word, had him, the world... The word held him steadfast, allowing him to come out on top once again. Having said that, one of his true loves is to teach the word of God in a simplistic way, always drawing down from his own personal experiences. Every call is unique, and he is led by God when deciding on the topic of each week. God told him to start this call eight years ago, and because Ramacio has been so obedient, God uses him as a vessel to teach his word. I recommend that you get somewhere quiet and you can focus on this call because I know what you hear is going to be profound. Without further ado, let me get out of the way and introduce your millionaire mentor, Marketplace Minister, Mr. Amasio Fulcher. Are you there? Absolutely, I am here. Can you hear me, Meredith? Yes, I can. All righty. Thank you so much for stepping up and being our wonderful host, as you always do. I want to welcome everyone into 2024. This is the first official call of the new year. Been excited to get here, guys. Been excited to get to this call. Uh, I know that uh, we didn't have a call for the last week. As I told you, I wanted to, I wanted to get still and uh, hear from God on what the message was, what the theme was for this particular season. So, What I'd like you to do is, if you can, maybe send out a quick little note to a friend or two and see if it's not too late to get them to jump on this call. Absolutely free, as you know. And I got to tell you guys, we have got a very, very powerful season that we're starting today. So I'm glad that you guys are here. Uh, As always, you know the calls are recorded. They're always uploaded to the YouTube channel, Romacio Fulcher. That's the YouTube channel. Uh, but, guys, we're really, really excited to actually kick this off here, 2024. I want to take you back just a little bit before we dive into today's topic. For those of you that may or may not know, we have now been hosting this call for eight years. Uh, no, this is not something that was born yesterday, but rather we started eight years ago. And as Meredith, um, as she talked about moments ago, Literally, this was something that God had dropped in my spirit that he wanted me to, to do this call. And initially, this call was – initially, when we first started, it was designed just to help people in their business. Obviously, many of you know I've been an entrepreneur since I was 17 years old, and so I'm 46 today, and uh, God has blessed me tremendously. Uh, it's been one heck of a journey, but through it all, i got to say that I'm truly, 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 truly blessed. And when I say that, I mean not only the ups, but primarily the downs. If you ever really want to know what you're made of, go through difficult times in life. Go through difficult seasons in life. And that's when you can really test your grit. You can test your character. That's the real test. Celebrating wins and so forth, that's nice, but character is built in the rainy seasons, if you know what I mean. And so initially this call was was started 
based as a way for me to teach other people business skills to help them get up the hill. That's initially what this call was about initially when we first got started eight years ago. And then we realized that sharpening your business skills is great, but if, 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 if you know how to make a lot of money, that's awesome, but if you don't have the wisdom on what to do with the money and how to grow the money and how to keep the money, protect the money, then that's when we realized we needed to teach life skills as well. So for those of you that are new to the platform, every single Sunday, 4 o'clock Pacific time, uh, this is what we do. We teach both business skills and we teach life skills. And we do it for typically about an hour. And it's absolutely free. We've never charged one dime in eight years. And you, I solemnly promise to you, we never will charge. So this is literally a real free listening. There is no, we're not looking for more subscribers. I'm not looking for clicks. I'm not looking for any of that. This is a rather unique platform in that the spirit that this Paul has done under is truly based upon a principle that I would like all of you that dare listen, I want you to get the principle of which we do this call under. I'm going to say that again. My, my, I have two goals, two goals for the last eight years. Every time you hear me speak or you hear me host a call and bring other speakers on, there's two goals. Goal number one is I want every single one listening to know that you need to develop a very strong relationship with your faith. I cannot preach that enough. I cannot scream that enough that literally, guys, it's all about having a relationship with God. It's all about developing and strengthening your faith. Uh, it's, that is my number one goal. I'm not a religious person, uh, but I do strongly, strongly, devout Christian, I strongly, strongly am, faith, am faith-based, 100%, 100%. And so my first goal for everybody listening is to develop a relationship, strengthen your relationship with God, really, 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 really dive deep into a faith-based relationship whereby you can grow your faith. That is my number one goal above everything. I could care, if, I could care less if you remember my name or not, but the most important thing is, is for you to develop a relationship with God and begin, to begin that journey. And if you already have a relationship with, with your faith, uh, with God, I'd like for you to strengthen it, make it stronger and stronger. You know, the Bible talks about taking us from faith to faith, right? So that's the first goal, that every time you hear us, just know that that's a prayer of mine for everybody listening. The second goal that every time you hear us speaking on this call that we have, the second goal is I want you to really understand how simple it is for you to improve the quality of your life. I know that as we do this call, each of us, we're at different seasons in our life. You know, we've got all sorts of nationalities listening to this call, all sorts of uh, economic backgrounds listening to our call. We've got people from all around the world. You know, we, we've got ev- everything is on this call. And so there's one principle that I know, without a shadow of a doubt, it will always work. It will always be one of the most important principles that you can adhere to to change your situation. And that is, we believe what we make happen for others, God will make it happen for you. And I would encourage you, I would encourage you, Don't just hear me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm looking for you to not only buy into what we're saying, but I'm looking for you to apply it right now in your life. What you make happen for others, God will make it happen for you. I'm going to say that one more time. What you make happen for others, God will make it happen for you. Give you an example. 
and then we're going to begin the series here today because uh, I'm excited to get to it. I really am. You know, just earlier today, well, uh, this last couple of weeks has been 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 a you know it's been a tough couple of weeks for our family. Uh, you know, right on Christmas Day, my oldest brother uh, went to sleep Christmas Eve and didn't wake up on Christmas Day. Fifty nine years young, healthy young man, uh, had some heart complications, and we lost we lost my brother on Christmas Day. Thank you for your prayers, et cetera. And then just a few days before Christmas, uh, the best neighbor I've ever had in my entire life lives right across the street from my home, and uh, he's 85, and he, too, didn't wake up as well, died in his sleep. And long story short, uh, this particular neighbor, uh, he had a granddaughter who he was very, very close to. She was 25 years old, and uh, they were like best friends. And long story short, just a couple hours ago, I knew that um, she was taking, you know, his death really, really, really hard. He just had the funeral just a couple days ago. And so, you know, I offered to, I don't even drink coffee, but I offered to have some coffee with her and just sit down and and just just have a conversation because I knew her grandfather pretty well as a neighbor. He was the best neighbor I've ever had in my life. Great times with uh, Bob. And uh, just got a chance to get to know his granddaughter and his daughter uh, a little bit better. We just sat there for about an hour, hour and a half, and we just had good conversation and, and just talked and talked about the memories and so forth and so on. And I knew that her grandfather was very close to her. And my, my only goal was to just let her talk, let her talk and just show interest in her, who she is as a young lady, uh, some of the precious memories between her and her grandfather. And what was my mission? What was my mission? My mission was quite simple just trying to let her know that I can never replace her grandfather. You know, I'm not as smart as Bob. I'm not as handsome as Bob, not as wise as Bob, but I can certainly be a good second a second best, somebody that, you know, cares about her, you know, really, really liked her. She's a really nice young lady, smart girl, you know, and just letting her know that, hey, even though your grandfather is gone, love is still here. And, and that was all. It didn't, didn't, didn't matter who I was, what I had going on, how good or how bad my life had been. None of that mattered because I was there literally trying to pour into her just by listening, letting her know that the love that you received from your grandfather, I, I can't replace him, but I can do my best to be a friend. And, and that's what I'm saying. That's what it means when we talk about what you make happen for others, God will make it happen for you. Little did I know, I didn't know that she's not close with, she doesn't have a grandmother. She doesn't have any siblings. Her grandfather was all she had. Her family lives in Belize, which is another country, her mom. And so I I had no idea. I I didn't know any of this. But I just wanted to be there to let her know that she was still loved, cared for, et cetera, and just letting her know, hey, listen, you know, ask her questions about, you know, what she likes to do, you know, She's 25 years young, and she works, and no kids, two cats. My point is, what you make happen for others, God will turn back around and make it happen for you. That is the, one of the most important principles that I really want every single listener, if you forget my name, if you forget what this call is about, I want you to write that down. What I make happen for others, God will make it happen for me. It's very important that you understand this principle. Now, I've said that five times. It's a principle. And the reason why I keep repeating myself intentionally is to get you to understand that principles don't care if you're white, black, Latino, Filipino. Principles don't care if you're Christian, Muslim, uh, Catholic, or or not. Principles don't care about what religious background you are. Principles have no respect of person. Principles work. It's like gravity. Stand on top of a building and jump, and whether you believe in it or not, I promise you, you will be a victim of gravity working for you, right? That's the same thing about principles. And the reason why I'm really emphatically pushing this into every single person that's listening 
is because many of us, we all are waiting on something. I don't know a person that if they were to be honest, that doesn't want a better life. Not saying that you're not grateful for the life that you have, but I think that we all want to get better. Everybody does. I just believe that. Everybody does. And I think I find that most oftentimes many people don't know how to get better. And so we search the world trying to figure out different methods on how to change our situation. And I'm just here to tell you I know one specific way that regardless of where you live, what you believe in, I know that this works. I can't promise you that if you do it tomorrow, that the next day all of a sudden you won't have any problems in your life. No. What I can tell you is that the way that God designed us, the way that he designed human beings, is that we all are designed to help one another. In other words, you are the answer to someone else's pain. You are the solution to someone else's problem. And see, the world we live in a lot of times, it wants you to focus on your own self. It wants you just to be concerned about your own problems and how bad you've got it or what's going on in your world. And I'm telling you, that's where the world is totally different than how God's kingdom works. It really is about your neighbor. It really is about your neighbor. And that's why I want you in 2024, I want you to take up the challenge. Take up the challenge. And I want you to take up this challenge about really being intentional about this principle. What I make happen for others, God will make it happen for me. What I make happen for others, God will make it happen for me. Now, look, you don't have to, you know, publicize what you do for other people. In fact, it's better that you don't. But, but what I'm trying to get you to see is God knows everything. He knows about everything you did do and everything you didn't do. He was there. And, and what I'm trying to get you, my friends, to really understand, you don't have to pay for this lesson. This is completely free. But you've got to get this principle. You've got to start to apply this principle in your life consistently. You've got to apply this principle even especially when things are not going well for you. You've got to apply the principle of giving. You've got to apply this principle. Just a few days ago on Christmas, that was Jesus' birthday. God's son. That was the day that God gave us Jesus Christ on Christmas. That's when he was born. He was a gift unto the world. Okay? And so, again, I'm purposely beating this drum about this principle because I really want you to apply it in your life because I know it will make a gigantic difference. Now, some of you may say, well, this is great to hear. I do give to the poor. I do help out people, or I do this, and I do. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's wonderful if you do, but I want to encourage you to do it more. I want to encourage you to do it more. And the best part of what I'm saying, I'm not talking about your job. I'm not talking about your job. See, even though some – look, your job that you have or whatever business you do, that's mandatory because if you don't serve somebody, help somebody, you won't get paid. And if you don't get paid, you can't pay your bills and live. So I'm not, in, I'm not including your job. I'm talking about separately of your job. I want you to really learn to go out of your way to utilize this principle. What I make happen for others, God will make it happen for me. All right? Now, guys, I have done a wonderful job of mentioning this now uh, about six or seven different times because I really want all of you guys to start doing it. So if you got it, repeat after me. Say, I got it. Even though I can't hear you, <laughs> I can feel you in spirit. If you got it, say, I got it, guys. Well, listen, we're going to go ahead and now we're going to transition into what today's theme is about because I'm excited to get into it because it's going to start, it's going to jump something, it's going to jump start something in a mighty way for all of us that's listening. 
All right. You may want to get a pen if you don't already have one. I repeat, you may want to grab a pen if you don't already have one because it is about to be on, ladies and gentlemen. We are uh, – I took my time, guys. I took my time for the last seven days, and I really wanted to go before the Lord, get quiet, uh, get as quiet as I could so that I could really hear clearly of what it was that, uh, that God gave me to share with you. And, uh, and that's what I'm excited to release to you today. I take this very, very serious, guys. Um, and so I hope that if, if you're listening, I hope you're in a quiet place where you can really capture what we're talking about here today. Um, this is going to be simple, but it's going to be very, very uh, comprehensive, meaning we're, going to get, we're not just going to be generic and we're going to get deep into this particular topic that we're about to talk about. All right, so if you're ready, guys, I'm, I'm going to release it right now. Here he is. So the word that God gave me or for 2024 was in two parts. The word that God gave me for 2024 was that this is the year of intentional faith. Write that down. This, was, this is the year of of intentional faith, number one. Number two, Ramasi, are you there? One sec, let me see if I can get him back, guys. All right, guys, he's coming back. Ramasi, are you there? All right. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what happened, but I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. I'm back. All right, well. Nevertheless, let's pick back up from where I dropped off at. So I'm getting ready to share with you guys the, the, the word that God gave me for 2024. And I'm really, really, really excited about this. This is very simple, but it's extremely profound. And I want to encourage all of you to invite as many people as you can throughout the remaining weeks to listen into these calls. This is very important. If you have a pen, please grab, grab a pen and paper. If not, just catch it on the recording, no big deal. But let's get started. All right, so this is a two-part word that I'm about to release to you in which God gave me. And this is, guys, just so you know, this word that I'm about to give you, this is for me and you. This is for all of us that's listening, all of us that's listening live, all of us that's listening to the replay. I want you to really pay attention to what season it is. All right. So the first word that God gave me is 2024 is the year of intentional faith, intentional faith, intentional faith. Write that down someplace. We're going to really dive in so deep throughout today and the next remaining weeks. I think everyone that listens and participates, I know you're going to be abundantly blessed by what you learn, discover, and what manifests in your life uh, over the next weeks, days, and so forth. So, again, the first part is this is the 2024 is the year of intentional faith. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. 
The second part that God gave me is that 2024 is the year of healthy habits right now. So as you listen to these calls, some Sundays we'll be talking about intentional faith or we'll be talking about an aspect of it. And other Sundays we will be focusing on healthy habits. But both of these go together. Both of these go together. Oh, this is going to be so good. It's really going to be really, really good. I think we're going to grow. I know we're going to grow tremendously. I want to remind you, for those of you that have been with us throughout the remaining years, the previous years, remember we started two years ago when God gave me the word of the year of the miraculous, right? And then just last year, 2023, the year of right now, right? And now moving forward into 2024, the year of intentional faith, the, the year of intentional faith and healthy habits right now. So what's going on here, guys? What's, what's really happening? Again, whatever it is that you, whatever dream, whatever promise that you're standing on, that you're expecting God to do in your life, listen, that is still on. That is still happening. If it hasn't manifested itself, I promise you it, it will. As long as it's according to God's will, it will happen. But this is the year, guys, where we this, – this is the year. This is the year where we've got to be intentional. And I'm going to dive so hard into this throughout the remaining weeks. We have got to be intentional. Let me paint a, sum, let me paint a picture for you, our summary. Listen, God stands outside of time. God is not caught up by deadlines and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. No, no, no. God stands outside of time. He can do what he wants, when he wants, how he wants. Okay? So we, we don't have the liberty of always knowing exactly how God is going to do what he's going to do. But we do have the assurance, if we are intentional with our faith, that he will do it. He will do it. He will do it. Now, here's where I'm a little different than some of the other people you know. Some people believe, just pray about it, that's it. Take your foot off the gas, don't do anything else, sit back, wait for it to happen. I do not subscribe to that. I do not teach that. No, no, no. <laughs> I come from the school of Joshua. And for those of you that read your Bible, when you, go in the, when you open the book of Joshua, Joshua was a doer. He was a doer. Joshua was the one where literally where the rubber met the road, right? So what I'm going to be teaching you guys is how, yes, to be intentional with your faith, right? Intentional with your faith, which we're going to talk about that, but also we've got to be pragmatic or practical with our habits. Now, the funny thing is my grandfather said it best. He summarized both of these two concepts up the best. He taught me, he said, grandson, simply do your best and let God do the rest. And that's a simple way of summarizing what we're talking about. Intentional faith. We're going we're, we're to make sure that we put some habits in place to where we literally are doing our best, standing in full expectation and anticipation of what we're believing for. Let me say it again. We are going to put some habits in place. We, that means you and I, we're going to put some habits in place. Not just some, not just some words, but some habits. Some habits, habits. The Spirit kept dealing with me over the last week, week and a half, two weeks. Habits, 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 habits. How important our habits are. How important our habits are. And, and why is this critical? Because as God does the miraculous miracles in your life, whatever it is you're believing for, he's going to do it in you, through you, as you. And so what God is looking for in all of us, these trials and tribulations that we may face, 
these, this level of discomfort, this whatever it is you're going through, God wants to use that for your good. And knowing this, that means we've got to, we've got to mature. We've got to mature. We have to mature. So this, this is where, when we look at maturity, this is where habits come into play. This is where our habits and what we do on a consistent basis really defines us. Not what we do sometimes here and there, you know, but what we do consistently really goes before us. It speaks on our behalf. So this is why the theme of what we're talking about is to be intentional with our faith, which we're going to get to that, but then we also have to back it up with healthy habits, with healthy habits right now. And having those healthy habits is a sign of maturity. It shows that we are maturing in our development. It sends signals to, to, to God that we are ready to handle what you want to bless us with. We have, it shows, it shows uh, to God that we have, we've made room to be able to handle what you want to bless us with. You, you, you have to understand that God is your father. You have to understand that. He's your father. And as a father, he wants to bless you and give you the desires of your heart. But as a father who is all-knowing, knowing that you might want that motorcycle, but here it is, you're 13 years old, you might not have the maturity yet on how to handle a Harley Davidson motorcycle. So now might not be the time to give you the very thing you desire. I love how the scripture in Isaiah talks about I, the Lord, at the right time will make it happen. At the right time will make it happen. And so this is where this, this word healthy habits come into play because now we're talking about character. We're talking about maturity. It's growing you, your habits, right? All right, so let's start with the first part of it, and let's go into intentional faith, intentional faith. Now, when we talk about being intentional, guys, the year of intentional faith, this is, this is huge. This is very important. This is where we've got to understand that as long as we are human, we are going to have some resistance against us. As long as we're human, there's always going to be obstacles in our way. For those of you that have kids, you know, <laughs> you know, there's always going to be some difficult seasons where you're trying to ask the kid to sit down and the kid wants to stand up. You're trying to regulate and maintain and have a sense of control, but the kid wants to run amok and do what they want to do. What I'm trying to paint a picture of, there's always going to be obstacles, always. For those of you in relationships, man, I certainly, I wish he would just do X, Y, and Z. I wish she would just blah, blah. There's always going to be obstacles. Always. Write that down if you're taking notes. And the way that the Bible teaches us, us the way that the Bible prepares us on how to deal with this is it warns us that there always will be temptation. And, and the Bible tells us not to be surprised, for it definitely is coming. Temptations on all sides. There will be obstacles, trials, and tribulations, for sure. But the good news is the Bible also teaches us how we are to be intentional with our faith. Now, what I want to do is I want to simplify this. I'd like for you right now, here we are in 2024, I want you to think of one or two things that you have been standing on, you have been believing for, that you want to happen in your life sooner than later. What are one to two miraculous things, talking about miracles, that you want 
to happen in your life sooner than later. And I'm going to walk us down a path where we are going to learn how to apply your intentional faith for that thing, whatever that is, whether it's a relationship, whether it's finances, whether it's promotion, whether it's healing, whatever it is, whatever it is that you are standing on, expecting God to manifest through your life, whatever that is. I'm going to show you together how we're going to use intentional faith to be able to bring that to pass. All right. The first thing I want to point out, it is very important that you do not back down no matter how dark, no matter how tough times may get. You cannot back down. Let me, let me, let me take that slowly. Let's say you've been meaning to lose weight for years and you haven't gone to the gym and you're not doing this and you're not doing that. Well, I just, I'm, I just, it's just not going to happen for me. So you start to give up on believing in the ability for yourself to lose weight. Let's just say there's a relationship. You've been praying that maybe she could get right or he could get right or reconciliation or whatever it may be, a very important relationship that could really shape things in your life or your family or whatever, and you've been praying for it. I'm not telling you to stay. I'm not telling you to go. But I'm telling you, don't back down. Okay? Let's say there's healing that you're looking for in your body. And when is it, when is it going to happen? When am I going to be healed? Just, when am I going to get rid of this? Don't back down. You can't back down. Yes, you can get frustrated. Yes, sadness comes on all of us. Yes, disappointment does visit us. Yes, you do get a little withered sometimes. This is true. But you cannot back down on your faith. You can't back down on your faith. You can't. This is extremely important that you can't back down. Even though you've been waiting and waiting and waiting and when and when and when and when, when is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? You can't back down. Let me tell you why. Because that's exactly what the enemy wants you to do. Now, what is a habit that you can institute to help you strengthen yourself when your spirit gets weak, when your flesh gets weak. I'm a, it's real simple. Write it down. Write this down. You're going to need this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. I don't care if you are white, black, Asian, Mongolian, Filipino, Latino, mixed. I don't care what nationality you are. I don't care if you're an atheist. I don't care if you're a, a heathen, a Catholic person, a Muslim, Buddhist. It doesn't matter. Listen, it's a principle. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. In other words, what this means, I didn't make this up. This is written in the Bible. This is God's word. This is in God's manual on how we can protect ourselves, how we can strengthen ourselves. Listen, you can laugh at me. I don't care. You understand? There comes a point in your life when you begin to mature. There comes a point in your life where you know that you know that you know that you know you know what you're talking about, even to the people in the back of the class that's laughing at you. It's the fact is they just don't know. I'm telling you, it, this, you're going to need this. I remember when I, was using, when I was a kid, I used to laugh at conversations like this. What are they talking about? They're on the, all they're on the phone, and they're at church, they're praying and talking. and blah. Man, let me go outside and play. I was ignorant. I didn't know what I didn't know. But now that I've come of age through trials and tribulations, now I understand. I have a deeper perspective. I have a greater appreciation why grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, and those, why they constantly kept reading their Bible, constantly kept listening to different faith-based, not just music, 
but sermons. And I didn't understand at first. Can't we listen to some, some bibbidi bop? Can't we listen to some, you know, look, look, I'm not judging anyone. I'm certainly not perfect. What I'm telling you, clear as day, your faith will only grow if you are listening. Notice what it says. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So however you need to keep that in your ear, you need it. This is one option you have. Sundays, 4 o'clock Pacific, for free. Yes, if you don't want to grow spiritually, this is not the call for you. This is what we're going to do. We're not going to change it. Because the fight that you're fighting, the fight that I'm fighting, it's a real fight. I'm just as real as you, and you're just as real as me. And when this call hangs up, trust me, life gets real. Situations get tough. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care how healthy you may be. The unexpected things happen in our life, and it's gut-wrenching. Pain is pain. But I like the fact, I, lo- I, 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 take, I, it, I take great peace in the fact knowing that my Lord and Savior has taught me, Ramacio, don't be surprised when this happens because it's going to happen. And he's already taught me in his word, in his manual, this is what I am to do to regain my strength. That's why I'm sharing it with you. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So when we're talking about, number one, do not back down what we're talking about. A good habit for you to institute right now would be make sure you are listening to something on a daily basis even if it's for five minutes, that strengthens your faith. Are you willing to do that? Because for you to have the stamina to run the race that's before you, and notice the scripture says, the race is not given to the fast nor the swift. But to he, but to he that can endure it until the end. So this is an endurance race that you're running. So knowing that I'm going to be in this race for the long haul, doesn't it make sense for me to have some healthy habits that will strengthen me spiritually? And what does God say? He clearly says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That's it. Now, now, now I want to I I I I show you something. Notice how it does. I'm talking to everyone listening here. Notice how it does not say faith comes by seeing. Because some of the things that you are looking at are temporal. It means you're looking at it right now, but that might not be here two weeks, three weeks, two years, three years from now. Notice how the scripture doesn't, it says don't trust what you see, because not everything you see is real. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? It specifically says in Scripture, faith comes by hearing, hearing, and hearing what? The Word of God. So my first question to you in terms of habits, are you willing to institute, whether it's five minutes, ten minutes, I don't care, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, every single day where you're listening to something that strengthens your faith. And I promise you, if you show up here on Sunday, oh, I'm, going, I'm definitely going to help strengthen your faith because that's all we're going to be doing this whole year because this is the year of intentional faith. So the first thing that we're talking about so far is I want you to put before your eyes what is the thing 
that you are, what is the promise that God has made you? What are you believing for? Whether it's health, whether it's, uh, 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 whether it's, you know, making progress on your job or business, a promotion, whether it's wealth, whether it's relationship, whether it's healing, relationship, whatever it is, I need you to write it down. What are you believing for? Because I am standing in agreement with you. The Bible says where there's two or more gathered, it shall be done. I'm standing in agreement with you. As long as it's according to God's will, the the, the answer is yes and amen. So what are you believing for? Have you wrote that down? Write it down. Number one. Number two, do not back down when times get tough. Because I'm letting you know you're going to turn on your news. You're going to watch TV. You're going to watch Instagram. You're going to see and hear through the airwaves of life that things aren't going well in life. You're going to hear catastrophes, death, disappointment, uh, 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 disparity, people not being treated right. You're going to hear a bunch of stuff jump off in 2024. I'm telling you right now, a bunch of things are not going to go well for a lot of people. But you cannot back down from the promise that God made you. You can't. You have to be intentional. Number two, do not back down. You can't. To help you not back down, number three, establish a habit of 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes a day of listening to something that will strengthen your faith. Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You don't have to listen to me. I don't care who you listen to, but you got to listen to, and I ain't talking about just a song. A song is great, but you got to listen to word, word, read the word, listen to the word. Word, You got to put, get, get five minutes in there. You can do it. At least five minutes. And why? Why is this? Because Scripture tells us, God tells us that his word does not lie. His word never contradicts itself, and his word never lies. His word is the only thing in your life that you've got that's pure. I know you love your husband. I know you love your wife. Did you not know that the Bible says that men and women will defile you, will deceive you at times? There's no human being except Jesus Christ that's perfect. This is, you better listen to what I'm saying. I'm talking to a mature group of people right now. The word is what you need. I know it's not popular. I'm not here to discuss what's popular. I'm here to discuss what's true, what we can count on, what we've been able to see back then, right now, and forevermore. I'm here to illuminate. So as we talk about this, it's important that you get, are you willing to take five, ten minutes a day to listen to something faith-based that will strengthen your faith. All right, let's carry on as we're talking about intentional faith. So, so far we've talked about you can't back down, can't back down. Now, so far we've talked about a habit would be to go ahead and to spend at least five minutes a day listening to something faith-based that can strengthen your spirit, although you may be getting impatient, although you may be getting angry, You may be getting frustrated. Although you may be confused and not understand why it's taking so long and why not me, all these questions are normal. It happens to all of us, myself included. But God said, listen, all things work together for my good. God said my faith will get stronger and stronger if I continue to listen to his word. I didn't say that. This is why it's very important that you must stand firm and you must not back down and you must grow your faith by listening 
and reading his word. You have to do it. If you want to save time in your life and stop wasting time going to your friends, doing what you think is the convenient thing to do, crying on their shoulder, and we all do it at times, that doesn't, that, that's just a quick little makes you feel good for the moment. But your friend is not going to always be with you. God and his word always will. So you've got to get used to, you've got to learn how to read and listen to his word. You need it. Yes, you. And I know all, everybody's afraid to tell you the simple truth. I'm not afraid of you. There's zero fear that I have towards you. I'm telling you what you need from a place of love. We need it. I don't care that you didn't grow up in the church. I don't care that you've never read a Bible. You need it right now. Because every person you're taking advice from, yes, they may be good people. But they, they, we all have some, they all got some, you know, some nasty stuff in them. Nobody's perfect. Nobody. My own grandmother, I love her to death. She loved her husband to death. But at the appropriate time, she used to try and manipulate my grandfather. Not in a bad way, but, you know, when she wanted her way, oh, yeah, I don't want you to leave today. I want you to stay home, Sam. I want you to do whatever she wanted him to do. She would start crying as a form of trying to get her way. What, if I'm, what am I saying? The point I'm making, I love my grandmother. I honor her. But I'm trying to show you, even in somebody who I look up to, she's not perfect. But Christ is perfect in all his ways. This is why you need to understand how important it is to prioritize growing your faith. And I'm telling you, start with five minutes a day. Will you do it? All right? Let's carry on. As we talk about intentional faith, let's go a little bit deeper. What number two, this is my second major point of the call here. What we are supposed to do when there we are, we are, we are standing on a promise that God has made us. And, and when I say we're standing on a promise, that, that refers to whatever it is that you're believing for, okay? So when you hear me say that, I'm referring to whatever it is we are believing for. And, and as times get tough, and it will, I want you to know it will get tough. How can we be intentional with our faith when times get tough? Let me share with you the things not to do. As I told you earlier, you don't want to back down. You don't want to change your confession when you're under pressure. You don't want to allow confusion to come into your mind and to begin to make you second guess. You want to stay away from doubt. All of these things are coming on you so that they can cloud your mind to make you lose strength, to make you lose power, to make you lose your conviction in the very thing that you're believing for because you haven't seen it yet. And what you are to do to counter that is you have to learn how to speak faith in difficult situations. You have to learn how to speak faith in difficult situations. Very simple, but very profound. You have to learn. Notice, you didn't, notice you didn't come out of your mother's womb with this. This is something you have to learn, but learn right now, on how to speak faith talk in difficult situations. Number one. Number two. You are to learn how to worship and to give God praise, even when times are not going well for you. You are to learn how to worship and to praise. 
I want to take a little bit of time, and I want to explain to you the power and why we are worshiping and praising. First of all, to understand worship, when we talk about worshiping God, that means worshiping God for who he is. For who he is and his sovereignty, you want to worship him. We're going to talk about that in a second. And then when we talk about praising God, this is you thanking God for the things that he's done in your past, the things that you know that he's going to do in, in your right now and in your future. But praise and worship is two different things. Praise is where... You're giving God the praise for all the things that he's done, expecting and anticipating for him to do more and more. So in other words, it's like you're praising God, yes. You're giving God all the praise, and as you praise him, he's going to do more and more and more and more for you. And this is true. This is true. But worship is where you are loving God. You are, you, you are, you are literally giving him all the adoration, all the honor, even if he don't do it what you want him to do. You still worship him. You're worshiping God for who he is, not for what he can do. So I want to give you some, some, just some notes that I put together for you just to kind of get you to understand why your go-to should be worship and praise. Now, look, I know you are sitting there saying, Ramasio, I need more money right now. I need a husband. I need a wife right now. I, I need to be healed right now. I need promotion in my life right now. I need X, Y, and Z. I, I know all of the natural things of this world that you and I both need. And I know that my answer to you is not the simple little one, two, three. I know the answer that I'm giving you is not, well, what you need to do is you need to sell more. You need to do this. You need to do this. I, 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 I intentionally know that what I'm saying to you is rather totally different than what you would expect. But one thing I can tell you, I'm a billion percent certain that this works. And my job is to teach all of us how and why this works. We're talking about worshiping and praise. First of all, I want you to imagine the feeling that you have. I want you to imagine the feeling that you have while you're waiting on something. Sometimes we get impatient. Sometimes we have anxiety. Sometimes we get frustrated. Sometimes we're excited. We have a ton of anticipation. Just imagine if you could all the feelings and emotions that come over you when you're waiting for something to happen for you. I want you to imagine all of those feelings. So in other words, I think all of you can understand that there's an energy that you feel within your body while you're waiting. And sometimes the energy Sometimes the energy is good, and sometimes the energy is bad. But there is an energy that you do feel. When you, listen to me, you got to get this. You got to get this, guys. When you begin to worship and praise God, what happens in, if, you're, if you're doing it and you're very authentic, you got to be real with it. Can't be phony. What happens is your energy is going to rise. Your, your spirit is going to, it's going to rise. It's going to increase. And what happens when that, when that takes place, all of a sudden you may be in a despair, dark situation, but based upon your praise and your consistent worship and your consistent praise, what happens is your energy rises. When your energy rises, now you become more receptive. You become more sensitive towards what you need to do, and you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you as to how to guide you through that situation. Let me say it again. When you begin to praise, 
and worship, which we're going to discuss in a moment. I'm trying to explain to you why you do this. It's going to shift your spirit. And I'm not talking about shift it like a five-hour energy drink. No, I'm talking about the, the greatest shift of all shifts. When you shift spiritually, you're mad, you're frustrated that he left or she left or that the money's gone or they're kicking you out your home or you haven't got promoted yet. You're just upset. You're frustrated, right? But sometimes when you're in that place, your, lim- your resources are limited because you're angry, you're upset. So you can't see straight. You can't, you're looking for direction. You don't know what to do. And the enemy loves to get us in these positions where all of a sudden we're mad, we're frustrated, we begin to feel hopeless. The enemy loves to get you in that position. And the enemy, he begins to work on you. What do I mean? He works on your thought process. And all of a sudden, that's when we make bad choices. Don't get me started. We all, y'all all, everybody listening, you know what I'm talking about. We all know how to go through that downward spiral. You know what I'm talking about. But when you decide to worship and to praise, even though you're scared, confused, frustrated, angry, don't know what to do, impatient, when you begin to worship and praise, The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. What I want you to write down, if you are taking notes, when we begin to worship and to praise, it's like a bat signal to God. It's like a bat signal to God. It's like he can feel that we're in a time of need, and we need answers. We need solutions. We need direction. But let me tell you this. Sometimes, listen, and this is very profound. You have to get your place. You have, let me say it slowly. You have to get yourself to a state in which you can hear properly. I'm going to say it again. See, sometimes... You're looking for an answer. You're looking for an answer, but because you're not getting the answer you want, you feel you haven't gotten an answer. And that's not true. When we begin to worship, and I know, let me just tell you, it's not easy. There you are in pain, serious pain, emotional pain, financial pain, physical pain. You need solution. And I'm telling you, the answer is to be intentional with your faith by way of speaking faith and worshiping and praising God, and this is your solution. And you're sitting there going, Ramasio, how is that going to change my situation? I tell you what, how about you do it consistently? Do it with all of your might. Put everything you got into it. And what will happen, all of a sudden, the spirit will begin to shift the way you're looking at things. The spirit will begin to usher you and to coach you on how you're looking at it, and it will help you shift mentally. Then it will give you what to do actually. Like I told you, when you begin to worship and you begin to praise, it's like a bat signal to God. This is another habit that I want to encourage us to establish. It's the habit of giving God praise and worship. Praise and worship. I know You might not think it's too popular. What if I told you it was the most effective resource that you possess? 
Think about this for just one second. If God is all-knowing, if God has gone through everything, everything, but yet he's all-knowing, wouldn't that be the person you would want to take counsel from? Wouldn't that be the person you would want to get direction from, guidance from, comfort from? Do you see now why the world wants us to turn to ice cream and all the other worldly stuff that we do? And I do it too. The world wants us to turn to all these other things as a temporal solution. But God loves us so much. He's trying to give us a permanent solution. But we have to get ourselves in a place where we can hear what he's trying to say. And when we worship and we praise, now God begins to come in and he begins to minister and talk to us. And the cool thing that I like, he talks to you in a language that you can understand. He talks to you in a capacity that you can handle. He talks to you literally in a way that you can process it. You get it. Nobody but you. It's like he customizes what you are able to hear at this season of your growth and your development. And I'm thankful that he does that. So here, I want to give you just some notes here on when you begin to think about who God is and you truly begin to think about him, you can't help but worship him. And my goal today is I want to just, I'm going to read some stuff, some notes that I wrote for all of you guys today. Uh, to hear, because I want to help you get a, a deeper, a better, a stronger, a grander understanding of who God actually is. I want you to notice, when I say what I'm about to say, I want you to notice, I don't say anything about religion. I don't say anything about Muslims, Catholic, Christians. I don't, I don't Buddhist. I don't, get in, I don't get in all that. Mormons. I don't get in all that stuff. We're talking about a relationship. We're talking about the one and only true and living God. I want to remind you, I also want you to know that what I'm about to read to you, if for some reason you like and love what you hear and you want to have this for yourself so that you can refer back to this and read it every single day to strengthen your faith about why you are worshiping, why you are praising, just send me an email and I will kindly have my assistant, we will send this directly to you. My email is my first and last name, uh, Romacio Fulcher, uh, 100 at gmail.com. Send it there. You don't know how to spell my name? It's R-O-M-A-C-I-O. My last name is F-U-L-C-H-E-R, the number 100 at gmail.com. If you send it to me, I will go ahead and send you the notes that I've prepared for all of us uh, for today uh, that you can actually read this for yourself. So let me just go ahead and give you who God is. Number one, he's worthy of the glory. Number two, God, he's worthy of the honor. Number three, God is the first and the last. Number four, he's the beginning and the end. Number five, he's the architect of the universe. Number six, he is the manager of all our time. Number seven, God can do above, he can do above all things and exceed anything you could ever ask. Number eight, he always was, he always is, and he always will be. Number nine, he was pierced. And yet, he held our pain. Number 10, he was persecuted, yet he brought our freedom. Number 12, he was dead, and yet he brought life to us. Number 13, 
the world cannot understand him. Number 14, the armies cannot defeat him. Number 15, the schools cannot explain him. Number 16, the leaders cannot ignore him. Number 17, the Pharisees couldn't confuse him. Number 19, Nero couldn't, couldn't crush him. Number 20, Hitler couldn't silence him. Number 21, the New Age couldn't replace him. Number 22, the grave could not hold him. Number 23, he's God of love. Number 24, he is the God who fights for us. Number 25, he is the God who causes us to triumph in every situation. Number 26, he is the light of my world, the lover of my soul. He is my Lord. He is, he is Alpha. He is Omega. He is the beginning, and he is the end. When you know what he is capable of and who he is, you can't help but lift his name up and give him the glory. You see, this is why it's so important for you to recite or read what it is that I wrote so that you have a greater, a deeper understanding of who he is. See, when you don't know who he is, no wonder why you don't defer to him. You don't know. But today I want to take the ignorance off of you. I want to put you, I want to bring you into the light free of charge. Like God said, if I make it happen for you, he'll make it happen for me. All you got to do is send me an email. I'm going to send you all of this. I'll put this together for you. Now, this is when it gets better. These are all my notes here. I want to take you back into Scripture. I want to, get, I want to take you back into Scripture just to let you know how big God is and all those that he's helped. And I want you to listen carefully, as I know some of you may not understand some of this. But think of it this way. I'm giving you a cheat code of exactly what's written in the Bible. So I'm going to give you some of the people in Scripture that testify who the God is that we serve. Number one, God was Adam's redeemer. Number two, he was Abel's vindicator. Number three, he was Noah's ark. Number four, he was Adam's sacrifice. Number five, he was Moses' burning bush. Number six, he was Joshua's battle axe. Number seven, he was Gideon's fleece. Number eight, he was Daniel's lion tamer. Number nine, he was David's music. Number 10, he was Solomon's wisdom. Number 11, he was Ezekiel when he was in the middle of the wheel. Number 12, he was Jeremiah's bomb in Gideon. Number, 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 number 13, he was Matthew's king. Number 14, he was Mark's suffering servant. Number 15, he was Luke's great physician. Ladies and gentlemen, I can go on and on and on and on. The point, why am I telling you all of this? I'm telling you, you are not a fool by worshiping and praising God. He will come to your rescue. As a result of some of the prophets that I just mentioned, it's important that you understand that as they were praising God, here were some of the results that they saw. They saw signs, miracles, and wonders. They saw miracles be done. They saw healing. They saw cancer removed. They saw tumors shrink. They saw blind people see. They saw the lame walk. Now, look, I'm telling you to read this. I'm telling you to listen to this so that your faith can grow. See, when you praise God, I want you to understand, see, we praise God because of who he is. We praise God because we know that he's good. We know that he's consistent. We know that he's faithful. We know that God is kind. We know that God is dependable. We know, we know that he always will come through. We know that there's nobody like God. We know that he's our healer. We know that God is our strength. We know that God is our joy. 
We know that God is our peace. Okay? And what happens when we praise him, depression has to flee. In other words, depression has to go away. Peace has to show up. Joy has to show up. Healing has to manifest, right? And this is really important that when you're praising him, ladies and gentlemen, you're praising him with an expectation. You you know, when I praise God, I expect a rescue out of a dark situation. When I praise God, I expect revival to take place. When I praise God, I expect things, I expect the things that will not be as they have to, as they have to flee. When I praise God, I expect in 2024, we will see signs, wonders, and miracles take place. I expect the heavens to open up over my life, over my church. I expect increase to be my portion. You see what I'm saying? I'm trying to give you rhyme reason for why we praise. We praise God because there's nobody like him. You see, you've got to learn that God is your Jehovah Jireh, meaning he's the one that provides. You've got to learn that when you praise God, he's your Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. You've got to learn that when you praise God, he's your Jehovah Nisi. He is the banner, the mighty warrior, the victor. Okay? You've got to understand that when you praise God, he's your Jehovah Kamina. He's the Lord of recompense, meaning he will repay nothing missing, nothing broken. You've got to understand he's your El Shaddai, the nurturing God. See, you've got to understand who God is. Guys, I've got to give you the cheat sheet. If you don't know, then of course you won't praise him because you don't know. And when you don't know, you continue to search around trying everything, 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 trying to fix something that nothing can fix except the word of God. I want you to let that sink in. When you don't know what you don't know, you'll try everything else, hoping that that will fix the situation. I heard one man said, I tried everything, money, women, sex, drugs. He said he tried everything, and he still felt empty. He couldn't get no peace, couldn't get an answer. Look, here's what I'm trying to tell you, ladies and gentlemen. It was two years, almost two years, a little, it was three years ago, excuse me, that literally God made me a promise, and, and that's between me and him. He made me a promise, and I'm telling you that I know that the promise that he made me, it is done. Matter of fact, I am manifesting it as we speak. This is a part of the manifesting process, kind of like a baby being, in, a woman being in labor, and, and, and everybody saying, well, when is the baby going to come? Well, it's coming right now. But what do you mean, man? It, it, it ain't, it, six months is a part of the nine-month process. That was what you mean. You can't just get excited about the delivery when it comes out. you got to understand it's the whole process of delivering this baby. I heard somebody tell me, when you're trying to birth a human being, it takes nine months. But when you're trying to birth an elephant, it takes 15. So you've got to understand that God is, it is happening right now. So what I want you to do, guys, is today's call is to set the tone for what we're going to be talking about over the remaining weeks, 2024, is the year of intentional faith. In summary, we have to get intentional. And how do we do that? We've got to keep it before our eyes. What is it that you're believing for? Have you written it down? Is it crystal clear in your mind on what you are believing for? Okay? Number, that's number one. Number two, we can't back down. We've got to institute healthy habits that will reaffirm the very thing that we're believing for. Number three, we've got to establish a daily routine where we are listening to something that grows and strengthens our and strengthens our faith. We have to do it. Because if we don't do it, we will retract backwards and we will begin to just lower our standards, 
lower our dreams, and believe the miracle won't happen. And that's not true. And number four, most importantly, we have got to establish a habit of learning how to worship God for who he is and learning how to praise God for all that he has done, all that he will do, and all that we want him to do right now. We've got to to learn to have that as a habit. You see, what we're going to do over the next weeks, months, throughout the call, we're going to take the spiritual and the natural, and we're going to blend them together. That's right. We're going to be intentional with our faith, meaning we are doing what Scripture tells us to do, right? But then we're going to establish some healthy habits for ourselves as a sign showing I'm doing this because I'm expecting this to happen. I'm preparing for the husband. I mean, you're preparing for the husband that you've been dreaming about. You're preparing for the wife, in other words, that you've been wanting. That's why I'm doing this. You know, I heard somebody tell me uh, long ago, well, you know, here, here was a guy that, that he was, you know, 300 pounds overweight, 300 pounds overweight, but he's expecting a woman who's slim, fit, and trim. But that doesn't make any sense. You want the very thing that you're not. Now, you know, if you want to go ahead and wish, go ahead and wish. You can wish all day, but if you really want it to happen for you, you've got to understand that you're going to attract what you are. Do you understand now why we're doing this process? You're going to attract what you are. You know? You're going to attract, you have no patience, but then you want somebody to be patient with you. Again, it's just, it's not making, hey, hey, Frank, it's not making sense to me, man. It's not, it reminds me of my dad, and I love my dad. I remember, quick story, my father, he used to, uh, he used to charge, you know, he was a self-employed man and a business owner. And he, 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 you know, he charged a healthy price for his services. I mean, a very healthy price. And I'm glad he did. He believed in his services. But the problem I had with my dad, anytime he went to buy something, he felt everyone else was too expensive. I said, Dad, I don't understand. You charge a healthy price because you're convicted, you believe in it, but you feel like everybody else is ripping you off. Something's not, not making sense to me. Again, you're going to attract what you are. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I want you to do from this call today, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna post this immediately. I want to encourage you to re-listen to it. This is going to be a year of manifestation. That's why it is so important. God spoke to my spirit. We've got to be ready. And a, 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 a sign of readiness is our habits. We've got to be ready to handle the blessing that is coming your way right now. You've got to be ready. We've got to be ready. Remember, we talked about maturity. We talked about, we talked about maturity. We know the unexpected is going to happen. Death is going to come on us. Uh, sickness may come on us. Famine is going to happen to people around. Things are going to happen. I, this, that's why I'm telling you, re-listen to this audio. It's not going to be a surprise. I'm warning you now, it's going to happen. But as it happens, don't you, don't you back down. Don't you change your confession. Don't change your promise just because pressure comes on you. You've got to learn how to fight back. And the way you do that is what this series is all about, being intentional with your faith. We talked about it, five minutes a day, listening to something to strengthen your faith. Number one. Number two, we talked about it. You've got to speak faith. You've got to speak it back. You've got to say it. You've got to open your mouth and speak the word back to your situation. Now, look, you can laugh at me if you want to. Go ahead. Hey, trust me, you're not hurting me. You're not hurting me. I know what it means to be strong and to get stronger. I've got my head screwed on straight. I understand truth, right and wrong. I understand my frailties, and I'm not perfect, 
but I'm not backing down from that which is promised to me. And I, I just hope that this message, it permeates through all that will listen, all that will hear. Holy Spirit, come amongst this group of people listening, both live and those that will listen to the replay. Do what only you can do. Touch them in a special place in their heart. Raise the frequency in their ear to hear something different this time than maybe they heard last year. Begin to illuminate what's, what, what's being uttered here today. Let it spark something in someone. This is a very simple but profound message that your habits is going to define who you are. And I know I've got some habits that I've got to break, and I know I've got some habits that I've got to institute, that I've got to start. My habits are a sign of my maturity. My habits go before me. Ladies and gentlemen, I love each and every one of you. Thank you for listening. Welcome into 2024. This is going to be a very, 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 very exciting year where there's going to be tons and tons and tons of manifested promises that will come to fruition right now. I don't want you to miss it. I want you to be a part of this process. It's not fair for you to be a part of the celebration, but you skipped the process. The process is what gives the celebration all its meaning. The process, this is what we're breaking down right now. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see everybody next week. Goodbye, everybody.